Hi, my name is Matthias and welcome to a new tutorial. Audio and instrument tracks were introduced in version 20 into FL Studio as ImageLine's approach to bring in some goodies from linear DAWs. Before this release, many users, including me, claimed the current system gets more and more cumbersome to use when the project grows. Too much steps to stay organized. For example, deleting an instrument, which was automated and already processed in the mixer. Delete the generator in the channel rack. Delete all the automation generators. Delete the playlist track. Delete the pattern. Reset the mixer track to default. And before this feature existed, you had to go into the files and load the default preset. This was actually ridiculous how many steps of user action were needed to do such a simple task compared to a linear DAW. Here it's just selecting the track and hitting delete. Or just something easy like simple renaming. If you decide later on in the project to rename an instrument, you had to do it in all according sections manually. Rename the generator, rename the mixer track, Rename the playlist track if needed. I don't want to blame FL Studio for being cumbersome, but in regards of organizing, it can be a complete nightmare. And most users of FL Studio ran into trouble as they tried to push a square pick through a round hole. Means using FL Studio in a more linear fashion, just because it makes often more sense than the pure freedom method. The price of absolute freedom in FL Studio was two loose connections between the different sections. The channel rack has no clue what happens in the mixer and the playlist, nor do the latter sections know what the others do. This is where Image Line needed to work on to make different options available. Please keep always in mind that these changes are optional. Everybody who likes to work with FL Studio in the original way can happily continue to do so. But keep in mind as well that in this case you will never benefit from the more streamlined workflow the updates of version 20 and later brought on the table. So here are 10 reasons why you should consider to integrate audio and instrument tracks into your workflow if you haven't already. There are several ways to create audio and instrument tracks and different behaviors of automatic routing. Drag and drop. By dropping a generator or an audio file onto a playlist track header, FL Studio will auto-route it to the first free mixer track. Free mixer track means it may neither be named differently than the default, nor it may have any plugins already loaded. When dropping an audio file onto the track header, you get by default a pop-up window. What you want to do with it? Do you wish to place the clip on the track without any further action? Or do you wish to create an audio track and place the clip on there? Or do you want to load this audio file into a sampler on an instrument track? Or do you want to cancel the action? This behavior can be predefined if you're working always the same way in the Edit menu. Drop audio on track headers. The option you choose here will be executed in future. For example, if you choose to always create an audio track, FL Studio will not ask anymore. In the cases where FL Studio creates an audio or instrument track, it will assign it automatically to the first free mixer track. Next, you can create audio and instrument tracks via the right-click menu. If you choose a new instrument from this list, it will behave like drag and drop. Connect this instrument track to the first available free mixer track and put in a new pattern clip. The same if you choose to use an existing instrument which isn't assigned at the moment. FL Studio asks if you want to assign it to the first free mixer track. If you say no, the instrument track creation will be cancelled. Very nice for all who like a combined workflow of the original and new methods. 
If your existing instruments are already assigned to a mixer track, FL Studio will reuse the same for the instrument track. Leave the previous settings and loaded plugins intact, just make the link and name the playlist track accordingly. Note that making instrument tracks from existing ones does not create a new pattern. If you create an audio track from the right-click menu, you can choose which insert you want to use even if it is already named and has plugins on. Note that just double assigning isn't possible. So all tracks which are already used for other audio tracks are grayed out. It is possible though to route an audio track to an existing instrument track, but please stay away from it as it can cause some trouble later on. Keep things organized and do not double use any tracks. A very nice example for automatic routing are audio clips. Not only that the routing of a clip is set automatically when inserting a new clip, it is changing on the fly as well when I put this clip on different tracks. Very handy if you have for example different effects loaded and experiment what sounds best for this clip. If you have another instance of the clip still on another audio track, FL Studio asks what you want to do with the one you want to put on the other track. Choose Yes for making a unique copy, which is then routed to the new track, or choose No that the clip is placed on the new track, but still played back on the previous track. There is a permanent link between channel rack, playlist and mixer now. Naming one, no matter where, names automatically all other sections, which can be a real time saver. Just patterns and audio clips keep their name because it can and will often happen that you don't want to have them named the same. If you wish to do so anyway, there is always the auto name clips feature. By default, Audio and instrument tracks will be given a name depending how you create the track. Dropping an audio clip or a generator onto the track header names the track after the audio file or the generator's preset you use. Creating an instrument track via the right click menu takes the generator's name for new instruments or the generator's name for existing instruments. Creating an audio track by right-click menu uses the chosen mixer track's name no matter how the playlist track was named before. So if you want to use a name directly with this method, you have to name the mixer track first. By rerouting audio tracks though, the naming of the playlist track will be kept, respectively the mixer track will be changed this time. My most used modifier key for creating audio and instrument tracks is ALT. Holding ALT when dropping stuff opens the renaming window where I can enter my wish name and color. The biggest advantage here for me is that the created pattern or audio clip are named properly as well. The ALT modifier in the menu sadly works just for new instruments. Once an audio track or instrument track exists, I can rename instrument tracks from any place and the other section overtake the change. 
audio track though can be just renamed this way from the playlist and mixer. Renaming the entry in the channel rack just renames the clip. Remember that clips are just auto-named when they are imported or created. Afterwards renaming a track doesn't rename either audio clips or patterns. Keep in mind please that now it depends what settings you have chosen in your general settings. If you have still the default option activated, auto name channels, be aware that every preset change puts all entries in the different sections to the same and new name. Same happens if you drop a new generator onto the entry in the channel rack or the playlist track. Deactivating this setting though gives you full control over the name. Neither preset changing nor changing the generator destroys name or color you have already assigned. I mentioned it already at the beginning that deleting stuff which had going on more stuff in FL Studio was very user action intense compared to others. With audio and instrument tracks, it got now even better in FL Studio than in linear DAWs. It's now much more streamlined, but we still have the choice what to delete and what not. Very nice implementation. Just keep in mind here that deleting will not reset the mixer track routings. If you wish to change this to the default, please use the entry in the mixer tracks right click menu. Second, there is unlinking of the channel which kills the permanent links. The playlist track got deleted and you can use the track selector again to route the instrument to other mixer tracks. Before audio and instrument tracks and before the picker panel, especially instruments could be just accessed or new instruments be loaded within the channel rack. This meant even if you never used the step sequencer or any grouping, you were nevertheless forced to work with this additional window. For me this was always a big drawback. Not alone because this meant I had to be organized in this window as well for actually no other benefit than finding my generators faster or finding them at all within this chaos. The picker panel already made access much easier for patterns, audio clips and automation. But the icing on the cake are now instrument tracks that you can access the generator directly from the playlist and there is no additional effort required to stay organized. For me that meant saying goodbye to the channel rack for most of the time, what made me very happy. Automation in FL Studio was another highlight which brought me sometimes to the idea to kick my computer out of the window. In crowded projects with the old method, FL Studio placed automation clips on the first track it found where was enough space to hold the clip. This meant many many times to study the project with a magnifying glass where the heck this new automation clip was hiding now. So I'm really really happy that automations are now placed in subtracks directly under my instrument or audio track. No matter if it's automation for the generator itself or for FX plugins on their mixer tracks. And this wasted time for searching is finally over. A very nice feature is being able to select now multiple playlist tracks and make them either audio or instrument tracks via the right click menu or instrument tracks by drag and drop. For audio tracks I cannot create multiple audio tracks by drag and drop for obvious reasons. But here the same works from the mixer the other way around. As audio and instrument tracks have a fixed routing to their corresponding mixer tracks, you can select now multiple 
and drop an effect onto one of the selected. This was a highly requested feature for many to quickly insert for example console emulations or helper plugins onto all tracks at once. Again a highly requested feature that playlist tracks get on track controls for not having to use the mixer for certain tasks. In this first round we got input controls and meters on audio tracks and now meters on instrument tracks. But I'm not sure if there isn't already more in the mix. One of my favorites. I really missed this feature from my work in Linear DAWs and I'm very thankful that this is now available in FL Studio as well. The shortcut had lately to be changed from the original Alt plus B to now Shift Control B, as Alt B was already used for switching to the brush tool when having Type to Piano enabled. Whatever will come in future, most new features in the playlist will probably make use out of audio and instrument tracks. There could be a way in future to save playlist tracks to import stuff more easily from one project to another. This can just work with audio and instrument tracks. Perhaps we get more on-track controls like volume and pan. Whatever it will be, audio and instrument tracks will be the main underlying requirement for the majority. Have a great time, stay tuned and thank you for watching.